Why has average catamaran size been increasing over the last 30 years? And why is this the case? In this video, we're gonna look at some data. I'm gonna to attempt to offer some explanations for why this trend has appeared. But before we get to the main part of the video, I'm gonna ask that if you already haven't, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out with my reach and my ability to continue making future videos. I know a lot of you already have subscribed and uh, if you have, kudos to you. I'm glad to have your support. My impression since I started sailing seriously as well as brokering seriously more uh, recently has been that catamaran sizes have been getting larger. But I wanna confirm this with some hard data to see exactly how much this trend has affected production models. Luckily, since I'm a broker, I can use the sold boats database to pretty much construct an accurate build history and model history for almost any catamaran brand, as long as it's not too obscure. Uh, some of the South Africans are a little tricky. So after scraping the requisite data, I put together some charts, which I'm now going to flash on screen. So you can see the model build, the largest and smallest production models for each brand of catamaran since 1990. We'll start with Lagoon, the largest builder, which has always done some things with large builds, but recently topped the charts with a 77 and ended production on the venerable 380 after nearly unbelievable two decades and over a thousand units. They also ended production on the 39, replacing it with the 40 as their smallest offering. And if a part in some shameless self-promotion, I have one of those for sale, so drop me a line if you're looking. Next, we have Fontaine Peugeot, which has gone in a similar direction to Lagoon, if just a bit more dramatic, ending the Mahé 36 and expanding the top of their range up to 67 with the Victoria and Allegria series. I'd say the worst contender in this category is going to be Privilege. Uh, the last time you could order a Privilege under 45 feet was around 2008, 2009. Uh, these days, they aren't even building under 51, so. If you want something more affordable, then consider getting an old 583 Easy Cruise and uh, breaking out the elbow grease. The only company which has gone in the opposite direction on the high end would be Leopard. They tried a 62 back in the earlier part of the millennium, but it ended up being kind of a commercial failure with very few units built. As a result, they haven't tried anything larger, though they've had more success in terms of units built with the 58. However, their largest customer probably doesn't have much of an appetite for anything too big. And last but not least, the South African semi-customs have generally gone in the same direction as their French counterparts, with most in and around the 50-foot mark as of right now. Okay, so now that we have an overall better picture of how things have been going, why is this the case? Well, one, one explanation for Fontaine Peugeot, at least, comes from my resident dealer in the area, Atlantic Cruising Yachts, where in an article, one of their brokers mentioned the reason for the discontinuation of the Mahé 36 was, and I quote, a practical reason relating to the laws of economics. Simply put, it cost as much to build a 36 as the new Lucia 40, which turned out to be 10 times more popular. So there you have it. Dealers would rather keep things simple and profitable in terms of lineup, and most people who are willing to shell out for a new name brand production catamaran are generally just willing to shell out for a little bit more. It's also important to not understate the importance that the charter market has on catamaran designs. Many catamarans are designed around charter. You specifically, uh, you know, larger luxury catamarans for larger charter groups have become more popular. More people are you know, doing larger charter parties and they want just nicer digs. The result is that you get, you know, really large brands like Sunreef building 80 plus feet, but production models haven't been immune from this either. I'll add to the following as well that in general, the world has just gotten a lot richer over the last 30 years and that money needs to go somewhere. As a result, yacht sizes, especially on the higher sort of super end side, have really just ballooned out of control. Uh, doing research for this video, I came across a neat tool courtesy of superyachts.com, which allows you to see a historical ranking of the largest yachts in the world, start at around 1992 and come to today. It's pretty illuminating. I'll have a link down in the description. As a result of all of these trends, 
At the time of shooting this video, not a single one of the big three production builders for the first time in history is offering a model under 40 feet. So is bigger always better? Well, yes and no. Being that these are sailboats, increased waterline length does help with your seaworthiness and your velocity made good as shown by the above formula. However, when you build a larger boat, things have to get a bit more complicated in order to resolve the various engineering stresses. Compare the rig on a Leopard 38 to a single spreader rig. Nice and simple. To the rig on a Lagoon 77. But yeah, it's a uh, triple spreader, so serious business. And then of course there is the perpetual elephant in the room when it comes to boat building, which is of course cost. Given that even production catamarans, say nothing of their more expensive semi-custom counterparts, have a reputation for being kind of expensive, this following trend has not really helped mitigate that stereotype. Though as a counterpoint, we do now have some smaller builds coming out like the Smart Cat, as well as a new Aventura line of catamarans. And I'm going to add to this the new XS11, which clocks in at a little over 37 feet. All of these manufacturers have stepped in, hoping to fill what they perceive as a void in the market. Will this strategy work? Only time will tell. I don't claim to be a prophet. As one boat dealer put it to me recently, business is a combination of throwing stuff out a wall combined with your research and best guesses. So with all that said and done, what do you think about size trends with catamarans? If you want to add to the discussion, please leave a comment down below. Feel free to like the video, dislike the video, and if possible, please consider subscribing. Thank you, and I'll catch you on the next one.